In July 2021, Valve really surprised the whole gaming and PC enthusiast community. The company announced their own new portable gaming console, called Steam Deck. Before we dive deeper into the question, can Valve's Steam Deck truly be the future of portable gaming, let's quickly recap some facts about this console we know so far, as of the end of July 2021. You can read the detailed specs on Steam Deck's website, but just briefly. 4 cores, 8 threads, Zen 2 based CPU, RDNA 2 GPU with power up to 1.6 teraflops, and the whole APU power consumption ranging from 4 to 15 watts. So, with the battery of 40 watt hours, you can play anywhere between 2 to 6 hours. And actually, the battery of 40 watt hours is really impressive for a relatively compact device. I was genuinely very surprised because I've seen many 15 inch laptops with like 45 to 50 watt hour batteries. Latest 2021 iPad 12.9 inch has about 40 watt hour battery and that's a much bigger device. So to see such capacity in a device this small is nothing but amazing. Each console comes with 16 gigabytes of really fast LPDDR5 memory. However, one aspect about it I don't quite get. On Valve website, it is said that the memory is apparently arranged as quad 32-bit channels. However, Zen 2 CPUs don't really support quad-channel memory unless it's a higher-tier Threadripper, so I'm not sure at all what's going on here. Perhaps it just refers to the arrangement of chips on the motherboard, and the memory itself will run as dual-channel or maybe even single-channel, hopefully not. Or maybe AMD did design something very custom for Valve, and it is indeed quad-channel memory. We'll see when the first units will arrive to someone like Gamers Nexus. Basically, the insides of all three available models will be the same. The one thing that will vary is the amount of internal storage and also its type in the case of the lowest tier model, which will not get NVMe SSD and instead will have 64GB of eMMC storage, while the other SKUs will have 256 or 512GB of NVMe SSD. Technically, this console will have an upgradable NVMe slot, albeit in somewhat rare M.2 2230 form factor, and that slot presumably will even be on a base 64GB model, but Valve doesn't really recommend you tinkering with it. Most likely the slot will be somewhat hidden inside of that console, so to get there you will have to disassemble quite a bit of it, which obviously isn't ideal. Plus, of course, not all PC gamers are actually hardware enthusiasts who would even want to disassemble their newly bought console to manually upgrade the SSD capacity, then somehow reinstall SteamOS, etc. That could be quite a hassle, really. The screen is a touchscreen IPS panel with 400 nits of brightness and 1280 by 800 resolution, so it's a 16x10 aspect ratio, like in MacBooks, rather than more common 16x9. Basically, if you like the screen of the latest MacBook Air, you should enjoy Steam Deck's screen as well, because they will have very similar pixel density and brightness values. And on the highest 500GB model, you will get anti-glare screen. From what I've seen, the games that don't really support that resolution will just have a small black bar either at the bottom or both at the top and the bottom of the screen, which is no big deal really. I think they went with this resolution, perhaps to accommodate small information bar at the bottom of the screen, so that's kind of neat. Steam Deck will have Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi AC, 45 watt charger, so you can charge your console fully in just one hour basically, 3.5mm jack with mic input, two trackpads, which is nice, gyroscope and USB-C port, and a bunch of buttons obviously. Overall, to say that I'm intrigued about this console is to say nothing. I'm really stoked, and I can't wait to get it actually, because this could be the perfect device to finally play at least some portion of those 300 plus games that I have in my Steam library. I'm sure many of you will share the same experience. You buy some game on sale, you maybe launch it once, then things get in your way, and you never quite finish it. Maybe you're a bit lazy to turn on your big and powerful desktop, Maybe you are just tired of sitting uh, on chair all day, whatever it might be. I'm sure Valve knows that too, really, really well, hence why they actually went to create this device. I would like to play some games when I'm in bed or on the couch, but my iPad doesn't really have anything on Steam, let's be honest. The games are not comparable, not even close. So when Steam Deck will finally be available, it's going to be a perfect console for horizontal position gaming.
Okay, so here's where I stop simply praising Valve and actually resort to a bit of criticism and also discuss a few interesting things I've noticed so far about Steam Deck. So, all the Steam Deck consoles will have micro SD card slot, but it's going to be UHS-1 slot, which is very unfortunate because it is a standard from 2010 that allows read speeds of only up to 100 megabytes per second which is a very slow compared to modern SSDs that could transfer at rates well above 1000 megabytes or even higher. UHS-1 is basically speeds from spinning hard drives. So now we're going back in time to that age again. Had the Valve opted for at least UHS-2 microSD slot, those speeds could have been tripled, reaching up to 300 megabytes and getting into kind of touching distance of modern SATA SSDs that usually have read speeds of about 450 to 500 megabytes per second. And I'm not even talking about the write speeds, which are notoriously abysmal on microSD, with common rates of about 50 megabytes per second. And even the fastest UHS-1 microSD cards will only give you about 90 megabytes write and 95 megabytes per second read speeds. Just a quick calculation for you. If you want to install a Red Dead Redemption 2 that needs about 150 gigabytes of space, not only will you have to spend at least 45 to 50 dollars for 256 gigabyte micro SD card, but it will take you, in the very best scenario, about 30 minutes to install one game. And in the cases of slower micro SD cards, it will be anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour to install just one modern AAA game. All while you could have reduced that time down to just 10 minutes had Valve made one very easy switch and gone with the faster UHS-2 microSD card reader. I get that they are targeting certain price point and whatnot, but that card reader can't possibly cost that much to justify going for a slower version in 2021. Also, I'm going to talk about it more in depth later, but I honestly think they could have and probably should have separated their different models more exactly with like faster micro sd card slot so if they needed to make one model at 400 dollars okay do that create it as cheaply as you can sacrifice on some aspects i get it but then make higher tier models better speaking about cheap models their 64 gigabyte model will use emmc storage instead of nvme ssd so how much slower will it be well compared to the proper fast ssds it will be quite a lot slower However, compared to the aforementioned microSD card speeds, probably this will be quicker. Assuming Valve went with um, Samsung for their EMMC vendor, and assuming they went with a faster EMMC 5.1 interface, we could expect speeds of about 330 megabytes per second for read and 200 megabytes for write, which is actually similar to those speeds of UHS-2 microSD card that Valve apparently isn't using. That's strange. Also, I get that you won't be installing games too often, however, once again, with the file sizes of modern games, you would either have to buy a spacious microSD card or two, or actually you will have to install and uninstall some games from time to time, and that waiting time will be annoying. Here's one downside of Valve Steam Deck, compared to, let's say, Nintendo Switch, because the games on Switch have been heavily optimized by the developers, so their sizes are usually significantly smaller. For example, Doom from 2017 is 55 gigs on Steam and just 22 on Switch. Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is 35 gigabytes versus 14.5, etc, etc. So on average, it looks like Switch games take about 2.5 times less space on your SSD or microSD card, which is quite significant. On the other hand, the giant benefit of Steam Deck is of course the fact that it is essentially just kinda low-powered PC with a screen and controllers built in. So developers basically don't need to do anything for their games to be available and run on this device. One caveat here is that Steam Deck will be running under Valve's own operating system, Steam OS, based on Arch Linux with uh, KDE Plasma as a desktop environment. So the games that don't support Linux natively will have to run through Valve's Proton Translator. And based on the things I've seen online, although its performance is actually very commendable, in some cases it's not really on par with the native Windows titles. Which might not be a big deal on a powerful desktop, but I think can be rather challenging on an already pretty limited device. 
Only time will tell, of course, how well the games will run, but I just want to mention here one aspect about Valve and their frame rate and resolution target, because a lot of people online are making quite bold assumptions already and starting to overhype this device. Valve is targeting 800p 30 frames per second gaming. For the sake of familiarity, we can say 720p 30. So 30 frames per second, not 60. I'm not sure what kind of level of details we're talking about here, because one could argue that it's better to play at like medium or low settings at 60 frames per second than ultra and 30 frames. But I couldn't quite catch that little detail in the interviews Valve team has done so far. Some people already made quasi-comparisons of how well Steam Deck might run certain games by basically limiting their existing CPUs and GPUs to the rough performance numbers of Steam Deck and found that the console from Valve will probably be capable of running quite a lot of games at about 50-60 FPS with medium settings at 720p. And while some more demanding titles will have to be brought down to low slash medium or just be enjoyed at FPS lower than 50, I think this is really promising so far. One thing however those people didn't really account for is the fact that those 16 gigabytes of memory that Steam Deck will have will have to be shared between the system, processor and GPU. So in fact when people did make some tests on their PCs and use 16 gigabytes of RAM, then another 4 to 8 gigabytes in GPU and simply limited uh, the clock speeds of both, that wasn't totally fair comparison, I think. Because my guess is that Steam Deck will most likely try to use about 4 gigabytes of that memory for GPU, probably about 8 as RAM, and another 4 will be reserved for a system memory to run operating system itself. I might be wrong, of course, and maybe OS will be lightweight enough to fit into like 2 gigabytes of RAM or even less, and also that memory allocation will adjust on the fly, but that's just a hunch I have about how those numbers would be roughly distributed. Overall, I suggest you to lower your expectations of this console's performance. Expect it to play 720p, 30 frames per second, maybe at like medium settings, and don't overhype this thing. Otherwise, you might come out of this whole experience quite disappointed. Okay, this video turned out to be quite long and I've covered just a third of what I wanted. So let's call it part one and let's continue talking about Steam Deck in part two, which will be linked in the video description and on screen. If you want to know everything there is to know so far about Valve's Steam Deck in one go, check out the episode of Frytech Podcast episode four. The link to Apple Podcast and YouTube will be in the description or just search Frytech Podcast in your podcast player of choice. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel and help me finally reach 1000 subscribers. I would greatly appreciate it. And also please let me know in the comment section your thoughts about Steam Deck and the whole portable gaming industry. Are you excited about it? Will you buy one from Valve? Or would you like it from some other manufacturer? Etc. Etc. Okay, take care. I'll see you in the next one.